Yeah, what would that be? 6.30? So that would be, yeah, 5.30 central. Tomorrow. Alright, we're here at Matthew Kelly's wood fire kiln. Probably gonna wait a little bit until I see yeah. if there's more people, because I'm not... There's three likes already, and there's only one person watching, so I don't know how that works. But... Yeah, it's all good. There we go. Yeah. What's up? Seth's watching. Seth should be sleeping. Yeah, he should. <laughs> Seth is working midnight to 6 a.m. DJ, what's up, buddy? How's everybody doing? We are firing Matthew Kelly's wood kiln. This thing has a massive amount of pots in it. And uh, right now we are at 16, 1600 degrees. 1670. 1670. So Matthew Kelly, this is Justice. Got the whole family. So we would love to answer any questions you guys have while we're stoking this thing. Hey, Matthew and John. Hey, Daryl. Welcome back. No, you were on mine earlier. Yeah, we did a, a live earlier on Matthew's. Tasmania, Australia. Sweet. Oh, sun oh, setting that summer behind me. And hi from Italy. Welcome. Oh, All right. Can I put a few in? Just... All right, John's going to do a stoke here. Here, we'll just... Uh... So we're going to open this hut up, and it is very... Hot, super hot. There it is. So that's it. That's the wood fire kiln. So we're firing up 100 degrees an hour right now. Uh, until we get up to like 2400 degrees basically and we'll hold it tomorrow morning for a while throw some salt in there blow it with a leaf blower so yep. it's gonna be sweet very excited now rock stars they um they play yeah. concerts yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we thought uh so we're right now we're still using hardwood you can see david over here stacking hardwood back here so, and we've got uh, some pine, um, pine strips as well as some poplar, which is another kind of like hard, soft, kind of in-between wood. Um, lots of uh, kiln-dried wood that I get for free. And then the hardwood I um, uh, also get for free, but there's a lot of manual labor in, in cutting and splitting and stacking. So, yeah. You want to say hi? Come on. This is my son, Justice. He's been out here for quite a while helping us. Say hey. Yeah, someone asked how much the lumber costs to run it, and you you got it all for free. Pretty but I, much. But I said in Minnesota, it's tough to get lumber for free. Like, I know people get cords delivered for... So, it'd be interesting to know how many, like, cords of wood you go through. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... Um, we don't have as cold a winter, so we don't do as much, uh, you know, not as many people use the wood around here for wood stoves. Yeah. So... Someone asked about reduction. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it doesn't get the same kind of reduction like my gas kiln gets, uh, but since about um, about fourteen hundred degrees, I pushed in the active dampers and we started getting reduction. You can actually see that soot above the uh, cover for the door, and that all comes from when we put wood in and that uh, back pressure and the uh, uh, and the reduction that's happening now and throughout pretty much all night until tomorrow morning. So. Look at that in there. That is so hot. How long did it take to build? Someone asked. Um, I didn't build it like all in one like go. So it's, uh, um, but I built probably three quarters of the kiln in about a five month period. So um, the last portion of it went uh, quicker than um, the other parts. Uh, but that's because I was just focused and I had a date set of when I wanted to finish. But overall, just the whole project took me you know, multiple years, like five or six years, because um, pouring the concrete pad, building the, you know, building the shed, all that, but just, just kiln construction itself. Um, yeah, probably three years total, three to four years. But that's because I didn't, yeah, I didn't do a bunch of it the first little bit. 
Yeah, someone asked about the glazes that we use in there. And, uh, oh, there's the comments coming in. And so we, I brought a bunch of pots that I sent some and I glazed some before with like Mako glazes, so typical ones that I would use. And so those are in there, so that's gonna be really interesting to see how those come out at, yeah. you know, way hotter than I normally do. So and then now, Matthew's glazes, uh, he has some different glazes and then he'll spray on an ash glaze. So we did that to a bunch of pots too. And he has tons of pots in here, but you know, I have, I brought like 150 pots to do in here, so. So that's what I got. Someone asked, will you go live with the opening? I don't know, Would, do you ever do that? No, that'd be a bit hard, because I, um, thankfully, it's because I have usually a lot of people here buying, and it's, uh, uh, I may give a preview or something like that, do a video of the preview of all the pots. Well, we'll probably do that as part of when we unload. We'll like show all the pots that come out, and that'll be part of one or both of our YouTube channels on video. Mm -hmm. So. And, uh, yeah, what did someone else, someone else also asked a question I was gonna answer. We go live. Am I gonna build one for myself? Well, I've been thinking and talking a lot about that, and that does seem to be um, what I want to do in the moment right now. <laughs> we'll see what happens when I go home. But yeah, it's gonna actually go to cone like 13 or 14 parts of the uh, kiln. We'll get to there, so it'll, everything will get to at least cone 11, right? And then parts will get even hotter. Matthew, explain the reduction aspect of a wood kiln, please. <laughs> DJ. Um, yeah, the, um, basically, well, reduction in general, for anybody who doesn't know, is when you have enough fuel in the form of the flames that take out, that, that burn because of the oxygen. You're basically having more flame or fuel than, uh, than, then it burns up all the oxygen inside the atmosphere, so it creates a reduced oxygen atmosphere. And that not only colors the clay, but also can change the chemistry of some of the glazes. Uh, and so in a wood kiln, a lot of times you don't get as consistent of a reduction atmosphere because um, the wood isn't like being introduced constantly like in a gas kiln. Uh, so in a wood kiln, we get it and it really colors the clay really well. We'll also, by midnight, we'll be at like 2200 degrees and we'll hold that all night long, like between 22 and 2300 degrees until 6 a.m. And that whole time, we've kind of got the kiln in a semi-reduction state, so that helps uh, just color the clay. That hold also helps build up a bunch of wood ash that will land on the pots and then eventually just melt and run. So it's really cool. So that's the short answer. <laughs> the, 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 let's see. How long does it take to fire? Uh, probably about, uh, about 40 hours to fire, depending on when we start the preheat. Uh, and then to cool down, it takes about two, two and a half days to cool down and then we unload it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Andy, not solar powered. Uh, mm -hmm. although the, Hey, the sun grew the trees there you go. that were burning in the kiln. So <laughs> were the pots made from B-mix, wood, clay, porcelain, other. So I actually use three different kinds of clay from Continental Clay that they recommended I try after kind of talking with Matthew and talking with Continental Clay. So I tried their fire clay, their raku clay, and then their bee clay with grog. Sorry. Trying to move it so y'all don't get, uh, the sun was kind of. No, you're good. Um, and then what kind of clay do you use for all your stuff? Uh, I use, uh, uh, it's called Oka Medium. Oka Medium. It's a, it's a local North Carolina clay made by Starworks here in, in uh, Star, North Carolina. Um, so all my pieces in here are made out of that, or most of majority of them. The salt gets added like after we've hit top temp, right? Yeah. So someone just asked about when do we add the salt? Yeah, well, tomorrow, once we get the, the top temperature will pretty much be reached tomorrow morning in the front. And then we spend probably a good six hours of alternating between putting wood in the front and also putting wood inside stoke holes. That helps carry that heat to the back of the kiln because the kiln's like 18 feet long. Uh, and once we get that cone, at least cone 11 down in the back, uh, we'll we'll put the salt in. I like I would love to get cone 12 down, but it hasn't happened yet. But at least get that down, uh, get the whole kiln, all the clay to mature temperature, and then uh, put the salt in at the end. And then we have to fire for a whole nother hour after adding the salt uh, to make sure the atmosphere gets cleared out of all the excess salt. Um, and make sure all the pots get really good and shiny again. And yeah, so it's, it's quite the process. Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, I got here 
when did I get here? Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. And then right away the next morning we came and you guys already had half the kiln loaded. Yep. So you were loading all day Wednesday and then we loaded all day Thursday, including glazing some stuff. And then finished up, like sealed the door on Thursday. And then last night at like 11 p.m. after doing all that, then we lit the little campfire right there. And it was just a little campfire like all night long. And then today we started ramping it up. Yep. So yeah, we've gone basically since about 5 a.m. It was like 300 degrees, and now, like I said, 300 to 1678, almost 1700 degrees uh, since five o'clock this morning. So in a good, uh, uh, what was that, 13, 14 hours? And David just came in. This, he, his shift is now 6 p.m. to midnight. This probably seems like me and Matthew are just here like chilling, but we did do a noon to 6 p.m. shift where we were doing this all. But now, now David's taking over for us. Yeah, we'll, I mean, I'll still, oh, Matt, Matt will be here I'm still going to be here. I mean, I live here, number one, but still, it's, it's my kiln, <laughs> mostly my pots. Um, but it's good that I don't have to, I can kind of, number one, David's learning, uh, but also he can kind of just jump in and do some of the things that I don't have to like, you know, uh, focus so much on. Because really it does, like there was a point even this morning when it was a low temperature and I was out here with the other guy that was helping, uh, Francis, another guy that helps me. And we were just having a really good conversation. And then we turn around and it's like, man, we've been kind of just holding steady instead of gaining. Uh, we we're about 150 degrees behind. And I was like, oh gosh, like even at that temperature, it was like, you know, I had to like focus for a few minutes and get back on track. Ben Patterson, sipping mug, for, or sipping coffee from your first wood firing. Oh man. You missed a couple of good questions in there, I think. Um, how often, so you do this three times a year, it's yeah. kind of your goal. And then there's, I think there's seven, Six or seven people that have stuff in here? Yeah, something like that. Probably yeah. like 80% your stuff, 10% my stuff, and 10% any everybody else's. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So now if everybody's watching, they'll be able to do some math and understand. Are you firing regularly? How long do you need to produce pots to fill it? How long does uh, it take you to make pots? Yeah, to fill it? it takes me probably two months to make enough pots to fill this. Around about, it just depends. Um, my schedule's getting a little more uh, difficult this year in a way because I decided to do more online sales this year. So I took a little bit of the time in the midst of when I was gonna be making pots for this to finish pieces out of my gas kiln for my first online sale of the year. So it was uh, tricky. I'm gonna have to learn to balance that for sure. Um, and so, yeah, but it takes a good like two months to make enough pots to fill it up. The first time we fired it, like it was like 99% my stuff and um, and yeah, it took it took a couple months, probably two months. I was actually finishing building the kiln and making all the pots all at the same time. That was crazy. So, next time, next time you uh, go in there, I want to pull the camera over and kind of get closer. So let me know. What other questions do you guys have, if any? <laughs> oh my, amazing. That's, that's my dad, Tim. Our wives We've, are pretty amazing. Yeah, like, I, w <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for my wife, trust me, because... And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my wife. Here we go. Here we we go. both, uh, like most men, we probably, uh, we married up. So, <laughs> so what else are we gonna say? <laughs> Where did I make the pots? I made them at my studio in Minnesota, and then I drove them here, so... I drove 18 and a half hours to get here. And I sent, a, like, I probably sent 40 pots ahead of time, and then I brought, like, another 100 some. Seth asked a great question that we were actually going to address anyways. He said, how do oh, you yeah. protect yourself from burning? So, yeah, John's going to grab, uh, so a couple different ways. Um, pretty much getting close now tonight, we're going to start. I have these leather welding aprons. You'll probably have to back up, actually, so you can see. And they're like a a full apron that you put on like that. It buckles in the back, it velcros around your neck so it'll protect your arms, your shoulders, your neck. Um, and then we have face shields that are tinted so that you can... I gotta do this tomorrow morning anyway, so I might yeah. as well practice. So that's what it'll look like when we're loading tomorrow, right? Yeah. Cool so thing. we do that right there, so you have... The face shield to protect your, you know, your, you can see in because it's a little bit too bright without it. Uh, also protects from the heat. And then all the leather apron really makes a big difference. You wouldn't want to do it without it. So 
But yeah, it's it's as and you, last time you melted a face shield, right? One my, of these, my first fire, and yeah. The first one you melted one of these. <laughs> so like, if you weren't wearing a face shield, you melt your face off. Yeah. We, I guess we are rock stars. Looks like a straight jacket. That's what he said. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Daryl, you have met Danielle, and yes, she's amazing. So. Yeah, Matt's wife's been amazing. What is the difference in glazing outcomes versus electric? Well, uh, you can glaze pieces in a wood kiln as well, but you also get the addition of the wood ash and the salt, which uh, pretty much makes everything melt a little bit more than it would in an electric kiln. Um, of course, we're firing to a hotter temperature. Um, you, uh, you get just a lot more. I'm gonna take you guys close up here so you can see what's, what's up. David opens it up. I mean, I can feel the heat from here. If I get much closer, I might melt my phone. Woo! So that's, that's hot. I can feel it on my face. Yeah, the wood fire process is just super, super cool. It's like so different. I mean, to be involved, like electric kilns are, you know, you push a couple buttons, starts going up, you come back later, it's done. This wood fire, you're literally involved in the entire process. Well, that's one of the biggest fireboxes I've ever seen on a kiln, somebody said. It's a I mean, this is the first wood fire I've ever done, but it seems like a big kiln to me. You know, you've not done tons. So. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot bigger wood kilns than this, but yeah, one of the things you don't want to scrimp on is in a wood kiln would be the firebox because if you don't have enough um, space for all that wood to burn, to combust all the wood, to reach the temperature, if your firebox was too small, you could really run the risk of not being able to burn enough wood to reach top temperature, so. And like the pots are like right there. So like yeah. if you're loading wood in there and the firebox was not big enough, yeah. then you're gonna be like loading pot like wood and then knock pots yeah. over. We've knocked pots over before, uh, not on purpose of course, but um, yeah, especially uh, when it gets into later tonight, early tomorrow morning, you really have to be careful when you're putting wood in because the ember pile also builds up and the wood could slide right across the top of the embers and right into pots. So, what potters inspire you guys? That's a great question. I mean, this guy's been inspiring me. Inspiring me to build my own wood kiln. That's for sure. So now if I don't say him, yeah. I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't have to inspire you as a potter. Yeah. Yeah, I watched, I, think. I watched his last video and I'm like, that videography, I'm just like, dude, I can't, <laughs> I can't. I'm like, this is not fair. <laughs> so, um, I was, um, Mark Hewitt is one of the people that is really his forms and what he does with wood fire really has inspired me. Um, uh, definitely, uh, there's local potters. I mean, he's fairly local, but um, other potters, I'm good friends with Ben Owen. He's one of the nicest people that I know um, and is an excellent potter um, and is really helpful. So, uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a ton, but I, so. I love, uh, I love Hammerly Ceramics. He's like just his whole business model and how he thinks about his work and how he thinks about coming up with new stuff. I think it, and his business is really inspirational, you know, not, he doesn't throw and doesn't, you know, do exactly kind of what Matthew and I like to do, but you know, similar, like just his mindset around things is really inspirational. You know, Matt Long. I do not. I feel like I've heard that name, but I can't think of it right now. Are you going to build a wood fire kiln? Hong, John, that's probably what they meant to say. Um, I, right now, I certainly want to. <laughs> I, I think at some point I will. Will you sell those special pots next restock? I will have some in here, yeah. As long as they all, you know, if they're, I don't know, if they're all amazing, then I probably want to keep them all. But if they're, if they're all terrible, then I wouldn't want to sell them either, so. We're gonna see how we're gonna see how they come out, but yeah, I would think there will be some in here. Ryan, there's lots of clay bodies from all different companies, depending on where you live. Um, you know, uh, there's there's gonna be a clay company probably not too far from you that has a high high temperature clay because it's not foreign. Like it's it's less rare than mid range temperatures for firing, just because that's more accessible to be able to fire mid range in an electric kiln. But if you're firing in a gas kiln, or I mean, you can fire electric kilns to high temperature, but it's just a lot harder on the kiln. Uh, but if you're doing gas or wood, there are clay bodies that can go to, you know, cone 10, 11, 12, 
you know, definitely from any any supplier. Yeah, someone said just said Warren McKenzie, and he certainly is has been super inspirational to me right away too. Um, he unfortunately Warren McKenzie died at a very old age not too long ago, um, and that's I just hadn't thought of him because I was thinking more of like modern. Yeah, but but yeah, Warren McKenzie inspired anyone that's making a you know a mug and a, doing production pottery. So. Yeah, that is hard, Sally. I know, uh, not having access to all the, the materials, um, it's, it, I'm sure that's tough. I, 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 fortunately, I live in a place where I can get access to them, but. Uh, um, yeah. Do you care if I take people through your studio? No, go ahead. Show them? It's I think, a bit of a mess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, people will be interested in, in what else we're gonna do this week, too. So this is Matt's uh, gas kiln, which we're gonna fire up either Sunday or Monday. Uh, I have more pots that I brought that I didn't put in the wood kiln, so we're gonna try some Mako. And Mako sent Matthew a bunch of glazes too, because they're glazes that I use all the time. They go up to cone 10 as well. Um, sorry, I think I missed a question. Yes, Mako, I just am talking about that right now. So we're using Mako glazes. Um, so I was just gonna show you guys Matt's studio space. So this is a really interesting, I love going to see other potters studio spaces because it's, you learn so much and you, you know, think about your space a little differently and how you can improve. But um, so this is kind of his glazing and firing area he's got a bisque going right now because he just threw a couple things for the gas kiln that we're gonna do um those are look at all those pots these are all pots that are mine that i brought that we're gonna gas fire before i leave more big pots here this is all it's, these were just full of pots glazed when we uh uh came and then he used to kind of step up to this little area up here where he has his wheel and he has some film equipment because he's been doing the YouTube game for a little while now, longer than me, I think. And then he has a cool gallery up here with some amazing pots, like super cool, does some really big stuff and uh, pretty different than mine, but mugs, you know, all the stuff, all the stuff. Oh, I gotta go the other way on the, I think I locked myself in. Oh, here we go. So that's it. This is kind of the, uh, everything kind of flows from the making area to the glazing area out to the kiln. So I've talked about that before, how important that is in a studio. It's thinking about the flow of clay and how it gets out and that's how Matt designed his studio too. So here we are. Oh, what's our temp at? 1731. 1730. Oh, the other thing I could do is what does an average wood kiln cost? Any idea? Mm. How do we check the temperature? I'll show you that while Matt thinks about that. So right now, here's the parameter that goes up these wires all the way across here. And then there's two probes that go in the kiln. One in the back of the kiln, one in the front-ish side of the kiln. If we walk around the back side of the kiln, What is the clay company that you recommend in America? I use Continental Clay. They're a local clay company. They're great for me. Um, if you're not local, it might not make sense to go with Continental Clay. I'm not sure what they're... Um, so EC did not come with me. Unfortunately, an 18 and a half hour drive in one stretch is not something that you do with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I mean, I'm sure people do it, but we didn't want to do it. So that's his shed with the wood kilns right here. You know, that's kind of the space we were just in, and then that's his little gallery up there. So it's a pretty sweet little spot. We're here in Seagrove, North Carolina. It's awesome. I really don't know how the Mako's glazes are gonna turn out in reduction. Yeah, winter wood. Uh, I got a winter wood in there. Got Mako, or uh, Matt has a few Mako glazes in there. It's gonna be really interesting to see how it turns out. But I know they all, I mean, they. I asked Mako for recommendations for which glazes they liked in wood kilns and what they liked in reduction and stuff. And they gave me a list of a bunch. And that's kind of what they based on sending to Matt too, so. Any other thoughts? Oh, did you have any ideas of what an average wood kiln would cost? Oh yeah. Um. It really depends on if you 
buying all the materials brand new versus like I got several of mine on a barter or discounted uh, because they were kind of like seconds. So um, I probably, if I had to buy all this material brand new for this kiln, probably would have cost me $40,000 and then $10,000 in shelves and posts, so $50,000 easy. Wow. Um, outside of that, I still spent $10,000 on shelves and posts, uh, but the kiln material-wise probably only cost me like, I did a barter for a lot of it. I probably have like maybe five to 10 grand in materials. Like I got out like really good, yeah. off, really well yeah. off. But I did, yeah, I like, Put it this way, I, a lot of the bricks that I have in here, um, I did a barter. I threw pots for somebody who had bricks that was like, you know, it was like $20,000 worth of brick that he sold me at a discount because I was throwing pots for him in exchange for the bricks. So, yeah, yeah, like, cool. I essentially paid for them more. I just did it in work, sweat equity. Yeah. Someone asked, is this an all day, all night ordeal? Yes, it is. It's an all. Someone is here 24 hours for. 40 plus hours yeah. all, the whole time. So it's someone, will, Dave's doing the shift till midnight tonight, and then Seth, someone, or he just said he's going to bed. He was watching, but he's coming back over to do the midnight to 6 a.m. shift, which Matthew was very kind to me and got people to do that, so I didn't have to do that shift long here. Do you notice a difference in the glaze depending on what wood you burn? I kind of wondered that too, but. Um, not so much. Um, I don't think you you could maybe notice a little bit of difference, but it's not going to be as noticeable as just the glaze itself. What type of glazes do you use? Says Ben. Um, I just use I just use uh, I've tr I've tested several different high just high temperature glazes that people would use in a gas kiln or any other cone ten to twelve glazes, and just found ones that worked well in. The wood kiln, I use a lot of the same glazes in my wood kiln and my gas kiln because they look different and they look good in both. So um, really just any high temperature glazes work in, in gas or wood, so. Well, and like the thing that I didn't really realize about wood now that I do realize, which I glazed pots and sent them here, which I would do differently now, is that so much of the time, you're not actually glazing the whole part. Like when, we, when I glaze stuff in my electric kiln, every piece or every part is always glazed because otherwise it, you just bare clay isn't very, like people don't love the feel of bare clay or the look or whatever. So what you do, we do on lots of these is you leave like the bottom half, but it actually gets, you leave it unglazed, but then it gets get glazed because of all the salt and the ash and the reduction and whatever, like makes it actually feel glazed, which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I have a whole lot of the, uh, pretty much the whole front face of the kiln is all pots that have no glaze on the outside because you'll get so much salt and wood ash on all those pots that they'll come out looking like you glazed them. Um, this one? Yeah, that one. So this is an example of one that you didn't really put any glaze on it. No. And so this is all glaze that, or like it feels glazed because it feels like it has some seal on the clay. Uh, and it's all from the salt that gets pumped in there and the uh, ash. Wood and ash, yeah. Wood ash, yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. It's really cool. Let's see. Any advice on just starting a pottery pricing and maybe just thoughts on custom jobs? That's a big question to ask. Um, I think you have a video on that that would be really perfect. Yeah, yeah, like, I have like 10 steps to becoming a potter. Yeah. Starts with kind of having an interest, like learning a little bit and then taking a class and then like finding somebody to work for or like help out. Like Matt, had, you have people, all, I mean, people have been here like in and out that have just been doing pottery for, how long have you been doing pottery? About four or five months. Four or five months, you know, a couple of people, you know, have been six months, eight months. So kind of finding somebody to help you out in the way that you want to go. and. I mean, there, yeah. go watch the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I should be, I'll set up my live stream tonight for in the morning, but it'd probably be like, I don't know, it might be like seven or eight o'clock in the morning, so. And that's like the really intense time is tomorrow. Like right now we're all kind of, well, Dave's not chilling, but. Aaron asks, how big a factor does the weather make, if any? It doesn't really, like I'm sure it could make some, but it's not enough uh, with this size of a kiln that it wouldn't matter that much. So. The shelves in here that you use? Yeah, the shelves I use, uh, Wayne asked what kind of shelves I use. The shelves I use are actually made by the same company that makes Advancers, so they're an oxide bonded silicon carbide, uh, but they're a different makeup a little bit than the Advancers, so they, uh, uh, but they're still very expensive still, um, but they just hold up really well. I, I went. I bought some of the best ones I could get. Um, 
for the money. You know, there are cheaper versions out there, but when you're doing this, you don't really want to scrimp on things like that. Oh yeah, there you go. My book, I wrote a book, Practical Pottery, if you want to get into pottery. Look at me, I don't even market myself. The best thing to do if you want to get into pottery is buy the book, Practical Pottery. It is a good start, and that's why I wrote it, is because there wasn't a great tool out there for somebody that like literally didn't know anything, and I felt like all the books get so deep so fast that it gets people actually out of pottery quicker than like getting people into it, you know? So, there you go. There's my five second pitch. Yeah, there you go. We met because of YouTube, so. Yeah, Matt was a Kickstarter. He helped me get my studio going on my Kickstarter, and that was really when I, we first started kind of chatting back and forth. and. Sometimes he would message me with questions about YouTube or video stuff, and I would message him with questions about pottery and all things clay and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you still use flux? You wouldn't really have to use flux in here. Like Stuff's really drippy yeah. at this high temperature. And where you, you hold it at 2400 for like yeah. six hours, you know? Yeah. Yeah, anything in here with a salt glaze, it would be food safe, even with no glaze in it, because that salt is gonna coat the piece. We still like anything that you're gonna use with food, like all the bowls I have in here, I would leave raw on the outside, but I still line them with a the glaze, just because it looks better, and it makes sure that it gets coated with a glaze to be food safe. Oh yeah, it's great weather, Patty. Um, it's a bit warm today, even for March, but. Uh, Lee, how nervous do I get every time I fire? I get more nervous. It's funny because I, I don't get too nervous of actually about firing anymore. I was telling John this. I get nervous because I when I feel like I'm not prepared for all the people that are coming to help me. Like, like if something were to mess up in the kiln, that's really kind of out of my control at this point. But the things that are in my control, like... I get nervous about that and anxious, but and I mean, you were, you were anxious this time because you right away, you didn't think we were going to have enough pots to fill it. Like yeah. you wanted to make sure you had enough. And then we had a ton of pots and you were nervous that we were going to have too many. And like, there were going to be lots of pots that didn't get in there. And so, yeah. And then there wasn't that many left over. So it was it worked out really well. So yeah. And I am referenced in a yep. book. Yeah. The wood kiln. I talked about different kinds of kilns, <laughs> which I could write that chapter probably a lot better now than I did then because I know a lot more now. Sally has invested in advancers and they're so worth it, yes. Uh, awesome. Let's see, we'll scroll down. A firing disaster. I've, uh, you, well, you had that, you showed me a picture of that time that a shelf fell over. Yeah, it wasn't in my kiln. It wasn't your kiln, but Yeah, but I was, I was part of a wood firing, actually during loading though, that uh, a whole shelf of pots fell over. And it was, yeah, that's, yeah, that does, every time I'm loading a kiln, I'm so, careful about cleaning shelves and then stacking the stacking the shelves well so that they don't do that so someone asked the salt distributed that's a pretty cool thing yeah I have a I have a leaf blower that has a metal tube and a hopper on it and so we'll uh, we'll actually set that open this front and we have a little shield that covers most of the opening we'll stick that in there and just dump salt in that hopper and turn the blower on and blow the salt in because we do about 50 pounds of salt. So we'll probably do like two runs of like 25 pounds of salt into the front and then like put some wood in in between. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of a wild way to do it, but it, it works. Someone asked uh, how long till we finish. And tomorrow, you estimated that we would be done finishing tomorrow at 2 p.m. So yeah. it's, it's like what, 7 p.m. right now? So yeah. however long that is. Yeah, I don't, I haven't really watched uh, Simon Leach's videos. Um, I guess I have to confess, I don't watch a lot of pottery videos on YouTube. I've been making pots for 30 years, almost 28 years. Yeah. Um, I watch John's, uh, I guess maybe that's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love looking, I get, I get inspired by the, the things, he's very good at video production, not that he's not good at pottery, but he thinks about things differently when it comes to video production. So I like to look at those because then it gives me ideas of like other ways that I could make my video quality better. Um, just to make, because I want to put out the best quality product as possible in videos and pottery, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I haven't watched much of Simon Leach. Um. Uh, burning any kind of salt, the gas would be toxic, so we just have to be careful while we're doing it, because you're, it's, you're putting salt in at the point that the sodium and the chlorine separate, so yes, it's. So most of the, whatever's coming out of the kiln is gonna go through the chimney yeah. out the top, right? Yeah. So, so when you're actually loading it, you're not really yeah. inhaling, like no. all, like, you can even see when the, we have the campfire and the fire's right there, you can just see 
that the kiln and the chimney, which is way back over there, is just sucking that fire up through the kiln. And so yeah. any like fumes or anything aren't really coming out this way. Yeah. Do you use soda? Yeah, what is the difference between soda and salt? That's a good um, question. I actually don't know the big differences. I've never fired with soda. You've been doing uh, pottery for 30 years and yeah. you don't know. Um, but it is different. Um, um, I know people that soda fire, they mix the uh, soda with um, with water and it's like sprayed in and that creates like reduction and introduces the soda into the kiln. Um, but yeah, I just do salt and I just uh, uh, buy, just buy salt that has no additives and, and use it, so. Someone asked if you're, the pots will look different in the front than in the back. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. You'll see that because we'll do some video of unloading as well. Um, they'll definitely look a lot different front to back, which is, and you'll have pots that look different one side to the other side of the pot, which is really amazing, so. And I think the, one of the big differences between the back and the front, from my understanding, is that the back won't get quite as hot as the front, and the front gets way more salt and Ashes. ash on the pot because that's like, the fire is right here, and it's probably, I mean, there's probably, how long, 20 feet? To the back? 15 feet, yeah, from the front uh, to the about back. Fi about 15 feet. 15 yeah. feet, so then there's four like stacks of shelves all the way going back. So if you think about all that ash and salt that is in the front, like you're gonna get some in the back, but you won't get quite as much as you yeah. get right on those pots in the front. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and this, this is, yeah, this is my wood kiln, and I did build, like I had a couple younger people help me throughout the process, but it was, yeah, like probably 90, 80 to 90 percent all just me. So here I'll show you guys. Are you gonna do it right now? Uh, in a okay, sounds good. I'll uh, show you guys. It in doesn't. Again. It, honestly, thankfully, it doesn't cost a lot for wood firing because I get most of my wood for free or really close to free. Um, but there's a lot of just like making pots. It's more about the sweat equity and the time put into getting the wood and prepping the wood, make sure it's good and dry. Because I have to start, you know couple months ahead of time just cutting and stacking wood so that it's good and dry uh, for the firing. Well, I should take you guys and look at all the wood. Yeah, yeah definitely. You. Um, was I, do you charge more for pots that are wood fired versus like gas fired? A little bit. Um, it just really depends on how much work I put into the, to the, to the piece. Yep. So this is all the stack of wood right here that's going in this kiln. So this will this all be gone. Most of it will be, yeah. Most of all that'll be gone. We'll also use some of this. And this, some of the wood will burn quicker. The pine burns quicker. And uh, that's what we use when we're like really trying to ramp it up. All right, we're gonna do this thing. Show you guys the inside. I've been taking so much video of inside of here. You're gonna see some sweet slow-mo action in here. See all those pots up and down. Sorry. There we go. If I got any closer than that, my phone would melt. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, we've been doing lots of good videos. We got some, I got some epic videos coming for sure. I have tried my red in this kiln, yeah. And uh, I even, I took, I took a piece and I put it, um, I had two planters in the bottom stack that were st stacked rim to rim, and so I put the red piece inside, so it was kind of like in a sagger, uh, and also that's the spot in the kiln that gets the most reduction, and it still did not turn red. It's just not enough reduction or consistent. Feeding the beast for 40 hours straight, actually. Someone said 24. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have several videos on building the wood kiln, or, well, several, I have a couple. There you go. I think we're all caught up. Put the shield over the phone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the heat shield. <laughs> oh. Seth, go to sleep. Well, that's a good idea. And act as an ND filter. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's try it. I mean, next time. Next time you're ready to go. Yeah, this this one's the brand new one. Do it with the brand new one. Yeah, because it, it, it'll be that, at least scratch. I like that idea, Seth. So right now we're at, it's seven o'clock and basically how we're keeping track I'm gonna grab this. Yeah. So, so we go, we want to go up 100 degrees an hour. So we have this pyrometer that we're watching all the time. So it's 1750 right now. 
and we just needed to be at 1700 at 7 p.m. So it's 7 p.m. right now, we're already 50 degrees above that. So we don't need to like be stoking it like crazy, but it can drop really fast. Like it'll, the temperature will start dropping pretty quickly if you're not constantly putting wood in. This is good. You gonna swipe over here. Oh yeah, there we go. Do you have face mugs or jugs? I have no face mugs or face jugs in this kiln. I like just was running out of time to make those for this firing. So unfortunately, I'm gonna make some face mugs for my gas kiln though, so. So yeah, the brick, so someone asked have you bricked the opening up? Yeah. I'm assuming that means that you're talking about the door. So yeah, that was a, a doorway and then Matthew built the wall and then we put this, what's that called over the top of it? Uh, we call it clamming, it's like a clamming. temporary mortar. Temporary mortar. It's made of salt, uh, I mean salt, um, uh, sand and fire clay uh, and just some kind of like red uh, red clay um, yeah. uh, and then okay here we're gonna, we're gonna do try the, this thing here, put claiming over the side stove coals there we go so now we got a face shield on the phone holy hot all right you want to go in first yeah All right, ready? <laughs> that was cool. Uh, so there you go. That's as close as you're getting without being here. Yeah. That's as close as we've... Does the heat from the kiln affect the roof above the building? Uh, not too much. I I, uh, I built it uh, in, sort of, in such a way that uh, the the cross ties that are the cross ties that are right here the wood ones that you would normally have in a building I've replaced those and I have threaded rod that actually goes across back there instead so there's actually within three to four feet of any part of the kiln so it still gets hot of course but um, yeah and even around the chimney it's all metal bracing there's no wood within like three to four feet of the of the, of the chimney also that was a pretty sweet I have to say that was pretty sweet putting that on the face shield and getting in there. It's like, whoa. I'm gonna have to like go, like download this live video and take that clip out. <laughs> or we'll just record it. Or yeah, or record <laughs> it with my camera. That's true, I could just put the face shield over my camera. I yeah, that yeah, uh, we, we're not, I don't know how many pieces are in there, but we're not also gonna guess because John and I both uh, follow us. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, do that because we're both gonna put up a contest of guessing how many pieces are in this kiln. We'll, we'll, um, we'll actually count them when they come out. And then uh, when we put it up, you'll have to get, you have to like the, the post and then also uh, guess uh, how many and whoever gets closest on John's and mine will each give a, a piece to the person out of this firing, so. Yeah. So yeah, wear if you've been- Wear gloves if you do the next one. Oh, when you get that close. say that? Yeah. yeah. I thought of it too, but. <laughs> Uh, if you've been watching this live video very, very closely, then you could get the range pretty, like I talked about how many pots I brought and then I talked about the percentage of pots that I thought you had versus me versus yeah. whatever. So you, whatever. so if someone cares that much. Yeah, that's still <laughs> not gonna, yeah. Uh, I don't think that's gonna help you a whole lot, but. It'll get you in the range. Yeah. Which we don't even know the right answer, so. No. Yeah, I didn't count how many pots I made. Do you count ornaments? I counted how many ornaments I have in there. No, I know, but do you, are we going to count ornaments oh. as finished pieces? What do you think? Comment and tell us. Do you think we should count the ornaments? Do those count as a piece? I don't know how many I got in there. You know how many pieces you got? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 3,000. That's a little... Good guess. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. Yes, yes, no. I'm guessing you're in charge of the coffee, John. I brought a little coffee, but. All right, no ornaments. Yes, count them all. Oh, we got like 50-50 almost here. So. We probably won't count ornaments. We'll probably just count throwing pots. Yeah. Because last time I counted uh, at uh, unloading, we didn't count ornaments. So, yeah, we probably won't count them. We'll just count throwing pots. I'll wear gloves when you do oh. the shield and he hold said, the No, camera. he said I'm trying to win. Oh. Seth can't wear Nah, I don't know if he you can He was here watching Seth. the unload yeah. when we loaded it. 
I don't know. Well, if you hit it on the nose, Seth, you can win. How's that? Because you were here. When is John building his kiln? Uh, uh, the plans have started. I mean, in my head. <laughs> uh, and when is Matthew going to Minnesota was the next question, because those two might be related, those two answers. They, they might be related. We've discussed all kinds of options. Yeah. Of, uh... Yeah, I do. I think I do want to build a wood kiln. My property is great for it. Like, I, there's no reason I wouldn't. I mean, the cost, I guess, is, a, you know, I don't really want to drop 50 grand on a kiln, but... Yeah, it won't cost you that much. I pre and I already talked to Smith Sharp about the bricks, which would be cool, so they might give them to me for a good deal. And I don't think I would build it this full, or this big. this big, but you know, I still would want it fairly big. You know, yeah. I think like at least two thirds the size. Yeah, of you want if you're gonna fire a wood kiln, most likely you want it big enough to give a little space to other people so that you get help firing. And not only it's not that you're avoiding the cost of paying somebody to help you, but David wants to be here for the for for the process to learn. He gets some pots in there, so he gets something out of it. He's invested, yeah. you know, in the process, so. Yeah, it's just a really cool thing. I mean, I, I didn't really understand why. I mean, wood fire pots are cool, don't get me wrong, but you can make cool pots in electric kilns and gas kilns, and there's something different about wood just in terms of, like, how it brings a lot of artists and people together. And, like, being involved in the actual fueling of getting it that hot. I mean, last night, we were sitting out here, and you had a piece of paper and a couple pieces of wood and you started a little campfire that, you know, was a 80 degrees. And now we're at almost 1800 degrees and it's gonna get to 2400. So that whole process of like being involved in literally all the steps of heating it up is, is something different for sure. Used coffee grounds to produce ash. I don't know, it'd probably be more like the, uh, I don't know, the hole off of the, that would make more ash than the beans. What was? Like the hole that comes off of it when you're, Roasting coffee. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah. don't roast it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be hard to do with the coffee. But. Yeah, seriously, I should just like plan some times when any subscribers of mine can come and help me build the kiln. Well, we actually thought work. about maybe even doing a kiln, a wood kiln building workshop. Yeah. But then you'd have to pay to come because it, it would be hard because you'd have to. Or you could say, like, tr you know, come. Well, whatever. We yeah, can we'll, probably figure we'll out a time. We'll Come, we get like, you know, 30 hours of labor from you and you don't have to pay for it or, you know, like I'll pay you to do the workshop and then I we get all the people to oh, come right. learn. Or I don't know. There, we can figure, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Or I'll just do it by myself. That's my, that's usually my jam. I'm a high school teacher. What advice? Aspiring potters. Well, I started throwing in high school. And so that's where I learned. Um, so, I know that I know that me throwing in high school is the reason I'm making pots now because I had a really good art teacher who was a potter, and I know that that's probably not on the top of the list of the you know administration to put money into pottery. So I'm sure he was a driving force for that class, but I'm telling you, I, and I told him personally that that he is the reason I get to do what I love to do for a living and. So it's invaluable to me, and as far as a teacher, yeah, it just, um, uh, I've tried to go back, to, uh, this, the teacher's retired since then, but, um, you know, I've tried to go back some to, to help out that class a little bit. Sorry, really loud motorcycle. <laughs> Someone asked about the wood fire kiln that's in Minnesota, which, yeah, I've never been to that one, I do wanna go. It's huge, it's the biggest one in North America. It's called the Johanna Kiln, and Richard Bresnahan, uh, when it was in Japan and came back and built it, and. They fire once a year and it's like 30 people, I think, all get it together. So yeah, I would like to be a part of that one too. Um, especially after being a part of this one and knowing like a little bit. Just died. Oh, it's not coming on? No. <laughs> yeah, it just shuts off every five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. What you can do with a wheel is amazing. <laughs> Oh, there's two high school teachers. Yeah, think both named Ben. Oh, what have you learned from each other while being together this week? Well, I we have, have a lot in common. I have learned everything I know about a wood kiln, <laughs> which is a heck of a lot more now than it was two days ago. So, no, I've learned a ton. I mean, Matthew's a huge source of information when it comes to all things clay and. Just being, I mean, you even being in Seagrove is such a, like, there's yeah. so many potters here and you've worked with just your, like, network of people that you know, yeah. like, it is amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we have a lot in common, that's for sure. We realize that. So, that's, uh, you never know. I mean, you know, we never met in person. Only talked on the phone, what, like twice before you got here? Yeah. Like, yeah. well, maybe three or four times before you got here. So, I mean, it's not like we talked all the time. Uh, but this, we were going to meet last year at Enseca for the first time before it got canceled. So, we kind of planned to start, like, getting to know each other better before. And then COVID just, you know, messed everybody's life up, so. We're all just trying to get better now. And, yeah. yeah, when you have, you know, like, just, you know, we both have young families. Like, we both are kind of into pottery and YouTube and video. And there's just a lot of, yeah, a lot of things we have in common. Yeah. Glazed decals? Most decals are probably a little lower fire than this, huh? Like, I don't know. Probably so, but... You could most I mean, decals you fire on at like cone 019 or oh, like yeah. I think that's what you're talking yeah. about. So that would be way like you can't even fire decals usually. That's Angie's David Swipe. Uh, like the Krispy Kreme. Dogs. I had a Krispy Kreme. It was delicious. Had you ever had one before? Yeah, I have. One. Okay. They used to have them in Minnesota, but they closed a bunch of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I do not wakeboard. We talked about that. I grew up. My family had a boat as well. So that's another thing we had in common. But I'm like 10 years older than John. So like I was at the age that I was about out of going to the lake with my family about the time that wakeboarding came out. So I never got to wakeboard. So. Yeah. So but, you're like 41 or 40. Yeah, 41. I'm 32. So I got into wakeboarding when I was 10. And so you were 10 years older. Yeah. So, so I was 20. Yeah. So someone asked a good question. Have I visited other potters? So I actually came to Seagrove like seven years ago and I visited a bunch of potters. That was before Matthew had an open studio. And so I visited Ben Owen, I visited Dirtworks, and I visited a bunch of different places. And yes, Matt has kept me way too busy to visit anybody so far. So I haven't seen anything else, which I we kind of talked about. I could go see other people, but I'm happy that I've been to Seagrove once already, so I don't feel like I need to like see a bunch of other potters. So because we're, I'm really excited to fire some of the Mako glazes in the gas kiln and use some just of mass glazes in the gas kiln too. Just because that might even be the first step for me before I do a wood kiln would just be to do a gas kiln. That, have that ability. Yeah, I we'll can see. Should we do a head-to-head -head challenge? I, I don't think I would uh, be able to compete, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but I would do it. I can lose with dignity. <laughs> Why are there so many potters at Seagrove? Can you tell us about that? Uh, well, it's a town. It's a tiny town. It's like a town yeah. of like three, four hundred people, and there's like. Yeah. 50 potters it's yeah. like a sixth of the of course when it yeah i mean when the pottery tradition started here there weren't that many potters i mean it started back in the day when you didn't have walmart to go buy your dishes so you had to actually you know they were made by potters and so there were natural clay deposits in the area that people could use and a lot of potters started out and made pottery in the winter they farmed you know uh, spring and summer and the, you know wh whenever they could and then in the winter they'd make pots so it was Kind of started out as just another way uh, to, to have something else to do. And that, like I said, the natural clay deposits that, that are in this area or that were in this area are kind of why it started here. So, yeah. And I, and why it's called Seagrove, I don't really know that because it's not by the sea. I mean, Are there any other places in the United States that you think are like pottery hubs besides Seagrove? There's definitely some, yeah. There's like places in, uh, uh, well, there's other parts of North Carolina, uh, the mountains of North Carolina, but then... I think there's, like, I know there's a pretty big community in New Mexico. Yep. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a, places in Georgia. I mean, there, yeah, there's different cities all over. Probably none as big as Seagrove, but. Yeah, I would say Minnesota has some parts that are, there's a big concentration, like the U of M and Warren McKenzie, that whole area. Like, this, the yeah. St. Croix River Valley does a huge thing, and there's quite a few potters yeah. there. There's some potters from North Carolina that go to that pottery festival every year in St. Croix Valley, Minnesota. What is the largest piece you've thrown? Matthew has a huge piece in here. It's giant. It's massive. The biggest one I've thrown, I had did a big planter where I threw like 15 or 20 pounds and then put coils on it. There's a couple videos on the channel yeah. about it. Yeah, biggest one I have is, is I've ever made is probably in here. and it's That's the biggest one you've ever made? Probably. It's about 60 pounds of clay total. But um, when I put it in here, it was about 34 inches tall, and that was after bisque. So we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Yeah, Minnesota has a lot of potters too. Yeah, yeah. I was just, Seagrove is just kind of unique for its, like, how it well known it is for pottery, like, for so many potters. 
That was a dozen other three pieces. I don't know what that means. I, yeah, I throw some in sections, uh, but then recently for the large ones, I've been doing them with coils because if you're gonna get a really large piece, especially if it has a lot of um, width to it, it's hard to throw a section. Uh, you can do a coil a lot easier. How's that going? You need some help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get my camera. Uh, we, we don't have to find things to do to pass the time because when we're frying the kiln, uh, the only reason we're able to stand here and talk to you is because David's working his tail off back here. So. Yeah, he's sweating. We're gonna have to turn this off and help him soon, I think. <laughs> it's just salt, no, no soda, uh, Noreen. Where do you do the first fire wood? I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna estimate, or we're gonna unload the kiln on Tuesday. So it'll be done firing tomorrow, which is Saturday at like 2 p.m. And then, so it'll cool down all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and then Tuesday morning, or Tuesday we'll be able to like take the you can see the cracks in there i can see the flame up in here yeah yeah anyway so then we'll crack all that off break down the door get in there and break down the door seal gently take the door down <laughs> get the man a fan god i can't wait for all of seth oh i do need to get a fan thank on you my seth. videos forever now i know who he is it's hilarious I know, I'm very excited. Everyone can't wait for the unloading, yeah. but. Hey, uh, Katrina, we're glad to be able to help. I'm glad you're learning from YouTube. You guys had experience? I've done some Raku. I'm sure I'm sure you've done Raku too. There's tons of Raku yeah. around here. I, I make most of my own glazes, and then uh, now, or now just getting ready to try some commercially made. John uh, uses all commercially made glazes, so they're all viable options. Yeah, you can go online. I mean, I share everything I do with all the combos that are there. Most of them all are Mako these days. Um, I still use some old ones too from Continental and, and Minnesota Clay, but um, yeah. Yes, the YouTube video of this whole experience, hopefully in my head is gonna be super epic. <laughs> it will take me a long time. Are your dampers all open right now? Uh, no, actually. What kind of wood and how much does it take in all caps? Ooh. There's a bunch of different kinds of wood, hardwood, and then pine, poplar. And, it, and, it, and yeah, I don't, I don't know, in cords or whatever, it's, it's just a lot of wood, so. All right, we're gonna take like five more questions and then we're gonna be done with this. How about that? About wood firing, I was wondering, why don't people seem to use blowers or bellows in order to get the temp up? Well, you really don't have to. Yeah, we're trying to control how much, like we can get it way hotter faster if we wanted to, but we don't want to. Yeah, let's just take it easy. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there, there, there probably could be wood kilns that would do that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see. probably super awkward when we're just staring at the camera yeah. both, like trying to read the all yeah, the I, uh, Sydney, <laughs> like, Sydney asked it, if is it, is it uh, <laughs> the bis fire was it done in the wood kiln too no I bis fire in either my gas kiln or my uh, or my electric kiln Matthew so. has a uh, bis kiln going right now actually yeah uh, Noreen said where did I learn how to build the kiln well I fired with a wood fired potter for five years and learned a ton about wood firing in general and then looked at all different kinds of wood kilns, I fired three or four different styles, and then uh, I patterned mine a little bit after another potter in North Carolina and just modified it a little bit, just asked tons of questions to potters that I know that wood fire, and then, uh, yeah. All right, should we do one more? Like one or two more questions, and then I'll take you guys in for one more look in there with the face shield. Yeah, and then uh, and then we're gonna call it good. Uh, you can raw fire in here, yes. Uh, and I do just a few pieces here and there. Um, it's a lot harder to glaze greenware. That's one of the reasons <laughs> that I don't uh, fire raw. All right. Okay. Last question. How often does John work out? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing to do with pottery. <laughs> It goes in waves. Sometimes I work out every day for like two weeks straight, and then sometimes I go two weeks and I don't work out. So it goes in waves, but on average, three days a week. Plus, I just don't ever stop moving, and like I'm constantly active, so that helps. All right, here we go. You are, it's, a, it's a good thing North Carolina is an open carry state because he brought the gun. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to take you guys in for one more. 
Can you push the little, push the little turnaround button? Oh yeah. Like you flip can. the screen on the bottom left. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, here we go, ready? There we go, all right. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Check back with us, when are you doing a live tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow morning, Matthew Kelly will do one on his channel. You'll just have to check it out to see what time. And then just stay tuned for lots of sweet content coming. I've been videoing nonstop, so, all right.